this awesome video about um jeff coons's rabbit piece um art piece the still rabbit selling on christie's i think it's a lot it's, a, it's the most expensive piece of modern art sold i think nowadays i think 54 million signed out sold the news but let's watch the video and then we can find out exactly what the details are let's get onto it now make that big there press that so you can see that and then let's get it on when it was first shown and so on about in 1986 it was a it was, there was a big stir about it the opinions would vary from like horrible to amazing wow of, uh, famously said the former director of the museum of modern That's so said cool he was dumbstruck when he saw it for the first time he called it an alien that landed but it's spot on and that's what many people see in this it was really so out there when he did it and it also stands for as one of the most important sculptures of the second half of the century of the 20th century wow. it is for me the antithesis to uh to to the david it's the anti-david granted it's not a young fantastic uh man but it is just an inflatable bunny uh, cast out of stainless steel that stands stands there in eternity wow meant to float everywhere but it's too heavy and would sink everything between marilyn his most famous woman and elvis his most famous man he chose the subject where he wanted to depict just a hero of his time who he thought would have longevity and as we know he does he does and he did because Elvis is still, uh, no matter how old you are, you know who Elvis Presley was. In a funny way, you can make the parallel to what the Marilyn is for Andy Warhol, JFK is for Rauschenberg. So this image, this very famous image that was ta taken from a Buffalo speech where he's pointing his fingers, uh, other important icons of the 60s, uh, you see the moon landing in the bottom left corner, you see, uh, Did I miss a bit of Christie's with a bit Washington. of Jeff Koons? Why are they going on about Rauschenberg? Okay, anyway, I'll, I'll find another video of it. But yeah, it's, it's sold for, I think it sold for about 54 million just the other day at Christie's. I think it might be the most expensive artwork sold so far. I'm pretty sure, which is absolutely insane, isn't it? Jeff Koons is alive and well and absolutely doing a damn thing. But I think those, those sculptures are really impressive to see in real life. I think sometimes you get a bit desensitized from those kind of things by seeing it on the internet, but seeing it in real life really does add um, a different element to it all, 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 all over again. Um, okay, yeah. So here's the uh, here's the piece here on um, yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure this was the one on BBC News. Let's get this up on here. Jeff Koons rabbit sculpture breaks the record for living artists. Like amazing, and to think this this is what this sort of thing is selling for that much. But it must imagine how cool that would look like in one of these one of those new amazing apartments that you see on the Zine. Or something that's so cool it's actually pretty big as well and it? it's a lot bigger than i thought it would be um a sculpture by u.s pop artist jeff Koons has sold for 91 million dollars 71 million pounds sorry my bad breaking the record price for a work by a living artist the christie's in new york sold the rabbit a uh, 140 centimeter still cast of an inflatable rabbit in 1986 for more than 20 million over its estimated price it beats the previous record set by british artist david hockney oh david hockney was up there okay i didn't know that the buyer has in it was in the audience but was not been named on its website christy described rabbit as a cute sinister cartoonist posing vacuous sexy chilling dazzling and iconic wow loads of words there it's one of the jeff coon's most well-known pieces the u.s artist sculptures um have provoked controversy for decades after he emerged as a leading figure in new york city of course this um, provocative. Let's see what the guide is to Jeff Koons here. A guide to Jeff Koons. So the thing about Jeff Koons is he's, he's obsessed with art history. So all his art is referring back to some art historical movement or another, or loads. And I, when I say referring back, I mean like really referring back mm. to 30,000 years ago. Wow. So if you look at his big pinky purple Venus balloon sculpture, which is made out of steel, which is huge. What is that? I think like that. That is a direct reference to a tiny figurine called the Venus of Willendorf, which was found in 1908 and thought to be one of the first artworks made wow. by man. Wasn't he also inspired by his personal life? He did famously marry an Italian porn star who also was uh, an Italian politician. He got divorced eventually, but they had a child. But he did make a whole series of artworks around that relationship called Made in Heaven, which is <laughs> graphically pornographic culture and stuff which is considered to be vulgar and it's interesting that they say that jeff coons inspiration is really inspired by you know essentially some of the greatest works of art but he gets completely pillared right he gets really really wrecked on so um from you know art critics are, are, are brought um wide and far but i guess because it's not you know it's maybe the 
from terms from the visual aspect it maybe just looks like the lowest common denominator right it's something that most people will be into and i guess most arts critics aren't really into that kind of things they want things that are going to push the envelope things that are a bit thought-provoking things that are super um a little bit uncomfortable to look at because if you look at the stuff that he did previously when he was dating the or when he was married to the porn uh, the italian porn artist what's her name chicolino checo how do you pronounce her name um that that work was really 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 edgy right it's it was, it was something that you expect somebody of that age at that at that place in time with the amount of fame and wealth that he had with those two worlds combining so that's the kind of work you expect right but now he's you know i'm assuming in his 50s or something he's a you know an older dude with an actual business with a team full of assistants with studios all over the world the work that he's making now is a is ref, more refined and maybe a little bit more would a little bit more intention towards it, right? It's not just like slapping everything out there and just trying to get out there for the sake of it. But it's also a part of him that's also maybe uh, democratic. He wants to have as many people in, as many people who aren't art fans come by the gallery, see his work of art, and be inspired. Uh, be um, have some kind of emotion that makes them makes life worth living. That kind of an emotion that can take them through for their working day, whatever it may be. I think that's quite an inspiring place to be as an artist, right? Where you can kind of touch the contemporary art fans you can touch the art students and you could also touch the general average uh, you know everyday person walking on the street you could be like oh that's really impressive is that is that a balloon oh no you touch it wow sick it's still obviously you're not going to get to touch the jeff coon's artwork but still the idea that you know that this guy is essentially making these inflatable sculptures that look like they're inflatable but they're essentially made out of steel aluminium loads of other kind of metals it's freaking fucking incredible i think and, and unacceptable is just turning it into art. But he became really famous for this huge puppy, wow. which was made of flowers, or it's made of lots of things, so it cool. looked like it was made of flowers. And then he's also very famous for making these big balloon like sculptures, like a, you know, like a kid's entertainer so would cool. house and they'd make a balloon puppy or a balloon swan. Well, Jeff Coons was doing just that, except his balloon puppy and his balloon swan was made out of stainless steel wow. and they were huge. It's all made with this super shiny stainless steel. Mm. So he argues that he makes these uh, surfaces so spectacularly beautiful and brilliant and faultless, not for himself, but for you. Exactly. Nice. How much would it cost me? It would cost you a fortune, Phoebe. You <laughs> can't afford it. You work for the BBC. <laughs> balloon dog sold for well, well over $50 at the time that's a bargain isn't it 58 58 million dollars now considering what that rabbit went for that's a fucking bargain and that and that dog looks like a looks a lot bigger than a rabbit i'm not sure if the prices for his artworks or his sculptures go by size um coloration uh finish i'm assuming they all finish to the same sort of standard i'd assume so um but yeah 58 million in terms of buying a dog in terms of the rabbit would be super worth it you could resell that really good maybe at flight club <laughs> most expensive and artwork is sold at auction made by a living artist since superseded by David Hockney recently. But you could buy like one of his limited edition Louis Vuitton handbags. Awesome. Maybe that's uh, the way of doing it. Good tip, thanks. What are your favourites then? The works I love of his the most actually are the early works. It's the work beginning with E. I see it's huge E. I, that's the word. Wow, I'm that's awesome. Involved him floating a basketball in a tank of water and it kind of looks like a fetus as well so i thought they they were great and he also did some really fantastic stuff with um hoovers yeah i love the hoover one yeah yeah i remember yeah, seeing the hoovers hoover. yeah i saw that one these old hoovers so cool and then you put them behind these long uh, neon lights and that was sort of harking back to the min minimalism of the 1960s yeah that's super cool like i like Morris that and Dan Flavin. except he was really into the hoovers and into the hoovers for two reasons once when he was a kid, he was a door-to-door -door salesman. As a child, he'd go around selling sweet wrappers. In fact, uh, Hoovers were still sold door-to-door, -door, so he sort of saw that connection. But they started running out of the Hoovers he wanted. He takes, starts taking these huge bus rides around America so he can buy the specific Hoovers he wants to show in his exhibitions. So That's so cool. That's so cool. Jeff Koons is definitely an artist of the time. So, so to say Knut Koons is irrelevant or silly, I think is, is unfair. He's somebody people like to pick on because the art looks simple. But he would argue that's the whole point, that simplicity is the most difficult thing to achieve. And I agree. Simplicity is the most difficult thing to achieve. That's some of the, you know, some of the best design is the design you don't even notice, right? It's sort of like the the you know the doors in a hospital right you you, you automatically know what which way to pull and push right without even thinking about it that's sim that simplicity of design is what that's 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 kind of design that is pinnacle that's 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 the real 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 uh, um, apex of design you have no it doesn't tell you to pull or push you just you know you just know instinctively because it the way it's designed is actually there's only there's only one way it can be done 
and I guess maybe in the creative field there is maybe a bit of snobbery towards that kind of way of designing because I don't know because I guess if you're a critic you want to write there's there's nothing there's nothing you can write about there there's nothing you can really flesh out you want something more something meaty uh, to write about but I guess for me as a fan of creative people and as somebody that wants to be creative and get into that field I admire somebody that's able to make a really well put together t-shirt a well put together pair of shorts a really amazing toothbrush a really amazing design beer bottle uh water bottle a really amazing design backpack a running pouch running shoes and just these small little design details i don't really pay attention to that really go a long way into making the experience completely faultless so yeah big up jeff coons uh that sculpture is fucking amazing and i guess if you have the money you should probably get that sort of stuff and just have it in your house for the sake, for the sake of it. Not even to resell, man. Just for your kids to look at something inspiring and think, you know what? Some human somewhere did that, right? And if I can apply some level of creativity to whatever I'm doing, how far could I get in life? How far? <laughs>